hunk setup. In this video, we'll set up a hunk on top of Hortonworks Hadoop sandbox. Before we start the installation, we need to get two files. The first one is hunk itself. Based on the link that you see, it's from the Splunk website. And we will select the Linux 64 uh, distribution of hunk. The uh, second set of files we need are the actual data themselves. Uh, for example, we're going to get uh, the Baseball Master CSV from this link, as well as a, an optional, we can get a, a soccer type of information, a soccer type of uh, data from the English Premier League for a different part of um, the use case. To set up Hunk to connect to Hadoop, we need to copy these four pieces of information. We need the Java Home, we need the Hadoop Home, we will need the Job Tracker machine and port, as well as the Name Node machine port on top of the Hortonworks sandbox so that when Splunk connects to Hadoop, it has all these parameters set up as part of its configuration. And finally, we're going to have to set up the Oracle VirtualBox uh, network. The problem is that Splunk by default uses port 8000. And however, port 8000 is already taken by Hue. Therefore, when we install Hunk, we're going to give Hunk port 9000. However, port 9000 is not configured as part of the Hortonworks sandbox to, for port forwarding. Therefore, if we want our browser to communicate with uh, the virtual machine, we need to add port 9000 to the virtual box network port forwarding as an additional option, as you can see from the image at the bottom of the slide. To log into the sandbox, we have to provide the user root and the password is Hadoop or lowercase. Um, that gives us an access to the box and um, the ability to install a hunk into this box. We're going to use Hue to actually load both the data and the hunk software and then we click on the file browser. Once we click on the file browser, in this case, I actually loaded all of my data and software into a directory. I created a directory called Ranan. And inside of that directory, I put both the soccer.csv file, the master.csv, which is the baseball stats information, as well as the Splunk software. So to copy the data from, um, from HDFS to the local file system, I'm going to copy the data into the slash opt directory. So the command is hadoopfs minus get, and then point the information into the Splunk software, and then tell Hadoop where to put that file into the local sandbox directory. That takes a, a few seconds. And once we have done that, we can actually extract that Splunk beta TGZ file into the app directory. And that also takes a few seconds to extract into the local file system. And now we are done. At this point, the next step is to go into the Splunk directory. And into the Splunk directory slash bin. And in here, we are going to start Splunk.
In the very first time that you start Splunk, you will get prompted with the license agreement. And you get the question, do you agree with this license? So you say yes. And Splunk will tell you that this appears to be your first time running this version of Splunk. And right away it tells us that as we expected earlier, as we highlighted earlier, port 8000 is in use. So Splunk will ask you, would you like to change this port? And we'll say yes. And uh, since we anticipate that, we're going to enter a new port, and it's going to be the 9000 port that we mentioned. And Splunk will use port 9000 from this point on. Once uh, Splunk is done with its installation and configuration, we will be able to log in through the UI and set up the connection to Hadoop from the Splunk configuration. As you can tell, Splunk is up and running. And so at this point, we can go into the uh, a browser again and type HTTP colon 127.0.0.1 and provide the port 9000. And Splunk will go in in the very first time that it's going to give us a default username and password admin change me and once that is done we are able to log in to the Splunk UI the next thing we have to do is to set up the hunk connection and virtual indexes to pull data from Hadoop to do that we click on settings virtual indexes and we will see two tabs one are uh, one is the providers providers are the connections to Hadoop the second one are the virtual indexes uh, virtual indexes is the pointers to the Hadoop directories that we're going to pull data from the very first thing to do is to create a new provider and we're going to give it the name HD H HDP provider and the Java home as we discovered earlier is the the following location so I'm gonna simply copy it from the slide and the Hadoop home is user lib Hadoop again copy and paste the next option we have is to choose what version of Hadoop are we communicate with uh, the version that of Hadoop that the sandbox 1.3 is supporting is Hadoop 1 MR1 however Splunk can talk to Hadoop 2 MR1 or Hadoop 2 Yarn and the next settings that we have to configure is the job tracker and we have those settings for the sandbox underneath the job tracker configuration copy that and paste and the last thing we need to do is configure the name node and so I'm just going to give the hunk the name node configuration and that is about it the one more element that we want to do is during the runtime the map produce are going to put their temporary processing in a uh, HDFS directory and we have to provide that directory as part of the hunt configuration in this case I'm going to put it in a directory called user hue Plunk MR directory. I am going to change the default Avro recorder 
to a simple CSV recorder and also the files that we're putting from Hadoop or CSV. Splunk can give us uh, several uh, options in this case, including the uh, ability to pull CSV, Excel, log files, Avro, JSON, and many other options as part of its in configuration. So we save that. Once we saved the provider, the next thing to do is to point Splunk to pull the data from a specific Hadoop directory. So in our case, we're going to create a new virtual index that will allow us to pull the two CSV files. Uh, for the sake of this demo, we're going to call it Hadoop underscore uh, sport because we have both the baseball and the soccer CSV files in a specific Hadoop directory. Um, the path to the data in HDFS is user hue run on and anything that is underneath that directory we're just going to basically give it ability to do recursively going down that directory as well as as we can see from the example we need to specify the type of files we want to pull and it's a regex expression and that is all we have to do once we save that, we can either go to the Splunk search and type index equals Hadoop underscore sports, or we have a shortcut right here underneath action. And I'm going to select that search option. That will copy the word index equals Hadoop underscore sports into the Splunk search command and we'll execute the Splunk ability to go in to the Hadoop directory and start pulling the data from Hadoop. Now, as we can see from the left side, Splunk broke down all the different uh, key value pairs so that we as users have the values like uh, birthday will give us all the information for example um, if we select at bats uh, use a key value pair we can ask Splunk to give us the top values right left or both handed and as soon as we select that option Splunk will give us um, the UI that match our search criteria. As we can see here, at this particular point, Splunk executed a subset of the results, and this is a very unique part of Splunk, the mix mode, where Splunk starts bringing us results right away from Hadoop. Although the map jobs are still not done, Splunk was able to give us subset of the results, and then only once all the maps are done, it will give us the full results. Of course, at any given point, we can change the uh, UI to anything that we want, anything that Splunk support, as well as a much richer visualization. Splunk can also visualize that same data set, the same baseball data set on top of a geolocation. So we can take the birth city of all the baseball players and we can map that data on top of a, a, a geographical location. Furthermore, if we look at the soccer data, we see parallel coordinate graph. Parallel coordinate graph is an N by N way of uh, analyzing data. So in this particular case, for example, this is all the games that happen in 2012 in the English Premier League and this particular graph can let us select any subset of the data and analyze the data. For example, if you want to see 
if games that uh, that a lot of fouls were committed during that game, as well as that same games that actually create that generated lots of yellow cards, are those kind of uh, games not they actually won those games, and we can see clearly that that was not the uh, case. And so this kind of uh, analytics can give us a lot of uh, kind of insight into uh, a very complex set of questions that we may want to ask. Of course, this graph can be rearranged and so on and so forth. So this is uh, a very nice way of displaying that same Hadoop data. So it's all the way from a basic visualization up to mapping to a, a very complex set and Splunk can give us the entire range anywhere from a basic search and exploration all the way to the top of the line visualization on top of that data and Splunk index the data allow us to search on that and build graphs and charts on the fly. To learn more about Hunk, go to the Splunk website and underneath the, either the product or the solution, you'll see links to the Hunk beta page, which will take you to this particular page where you can select uh, the links into the Hunk data sheet or the, some of our technical blogs as well as the ability to contact sales and request an access to the beta software itself. Thank you.